greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, you are welcome to tonight live streaming. I'm so excited once more again to be able to share the word of God with you. I believe that God wants us to be empowered, to be armed with knowledge, to be armed with revelation. Let us pray. Father, I thank you that you are the God who speaks. You are the God who loves us. You are the God, mighty God, who changes not. I thank you, mighty God, for revealing the mysteries of Christ, for revealing, mighty God, tonight the mysteries of redemption and salvation. We thank you, mighty God, that the windows of heaven of revelation are open tonight as you are speaking, mighty God. I say, Father, speak. We are listening. Thank you, mighty God. Father, for the cleansing by the blood of Jesus Christ, making me a vessel worthy to be used by you. Thank you for sanctification. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, mighty God, I thank you. Thank you, Father. That Holy Spirit, you are framing my words. I'm speaking, mighty God, with the tongue of the learned. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm so excited, you know. When God speaks to you, it's one of, it's one of the most exciting experiences that you can ever have or encounter as a child of God. Hallelujah. Tonight, I want us to share about uh, Jesus' threefold victory over Satan. Or if you want to give this sermon another name, you can also call it complete salvation or complete redemption. Hallelujah. Let us go to the scripture. I will try by all means not to not to teach I want us to have a conversation because it's important that you understand tonight's truth. This truth is the one that will set you free. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes 4 verse 9 to 12 he said two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, one will lift up his companion. But woe to him who is alone when he falls. For he who has no one to help him, for he has no one to help him. Again, if two lie down together, they'll, they'll keep warm. But, but who, how can one be warm alone? Though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him. And a threefold cold is not quickly broken. I want us to focus on verse 12. A threefold cord is not quickly broken. That is 12b. A threefold cord is not quickly broken. Hallelujah. What is a threefold cord? Threefold cord is what it is. A threefold cord is not quickly broken. Why am I using this scripture? You know, if we go to 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 23, you will realize that you are a triune being. We have, we have dealt with this before, and we will continue to dwell on this until this message is rightly received in your spirit. He said, now may the... 1 Thessalonians 5, 23, say, now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit, soul and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We see you are spirit, soul and body. Ecclesiastes 5 verse 4, 12 B says, threefold cord is not easily broken. Now, let us go to Psalm 103, verse 20. Psalm 103, verse 1 up to 3, I mean. Before we can, I can just explain to you the purpose of tonight's sermon. 
The bless the Lord, all my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, all my soul, and forget, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquities, and who, he, who heals your who heals all your diseases for, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. Five, who satisfies your mouth with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Here also we see David commanding his soul not to forget salvation. He's commanding his soul not to forget about what God has done. What we need to understand tonight is that your salvation is threefold. You are saved spirit, soul, and body. However, many Christians, as we stand today, have, they are sick and poor. And yet, we are born again. Why? Because we have concentrated our salvation on one area, the spiritual realm. But pastor, life starts in the spirit. Yes, I agree with you. Life starts in the spirit. The fact that life starts in the spirit doesn't necessarily mean we must be ignorant of the divine benefits of salvation for our bodies and for our soul. When you, are, when you know, when you are cognizant of the divine benefits of for your soul and body, you understand that your spiritual salvation need also to be complemented by your revelation of the benefits to your body and your soul. Can I repeat that again? Your salvation need to be complemented by the benefits of you, by the revelation of the benefits for your soul and what? And your body. What are the benefits of, for your soul and your body? But before you can do that, I want you to understand the threefold call for redemption. The threefold call for redemption is new life or new creation Two, healing. Three, divine, divine prosperity. If you look at new life, new life we are referring to your spiritual life. Uh, 1 Corinthians 5, 7 says, you are, 5, 17 says that you are what? A new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. But if you ever, before you were born again, you were black, tall, or dwarf, you will realize that even after salvation, you are still the same person. Nothing has changed. But yet the Bible says you are a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. It's new creation where your spirit man has been recreated afresh. It has been recreated anew, I mean. And also that is why I said there is a threefold code of redemption. Number one is new life or new creation. Note that one down. New life or new creation. Number two is what we call divine health or healing. First Corinthians 11, Paul says many are falling asleep because they are not discerning the body of Christ. Meaning many are falling asleep because they don't know the benefits of the body of Christ concerning their divine health. Meaning, we have, you have only one part of salvation. You are a new creation. Yes, your spirit man is born again. You are a new creation, but there are benefits for your body. There are benefits for divine health. There, there, there is provision for divine health. And also, the, the third one is divine prosperity. Many are, are born again, healthy and poor. Why? We don't have salvation. For what? For provision. We don't have, we, we don't have 
revelation, not self. We don't have revelation for what? For provision. So that's the reason why I'm saying, if we look at the salvation that Jesus Christ gave us at a threefold way, if we, look, if we, have a, if we zoom it in a threefold way, we realize that there are benefits that we are not partaking on as children of God. And that's the reason why many are living in fear. Because we don't know who we are in Christ. Many are living in fear. They are afraid of the diseases. They are afraid of what Satan can do unto them. But if you have all your benefits embedded in your spirit man, in other words, I'm saying, if you have the revelation of all the three benefits, spirit, soul, and body, that you will start benefiting as written first in Ecclesiastes 4 verse 12b that threefold is, a threefold cord is not easily broken. Hallelujah. I said this before that salvation without divine health is incomplete. Today I will add salvation without divine wealth or prosperity is incomplete. Hallelujah. So we're going to go through this for a long time. The, the threefold victory over Satan. And there is also a threefold curse. Threefold curse from Satan. It's a spiritual death, sickness, and poverty. That, that is what comes with, 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 with threefold curse. So now let, let us go into the Bible deeper. As I said, today I want to have a conversation with you. Satan is the reason for redemption. There could be no redemption without defeating Satan. Also, when man was given the garden of Eden, when Adam was, was given the lordship over this world, Satan wanted to steal that power from him. From, from, from Adam. But I want to put it to you that when God created man, Genesis 1, 26, 27, and 28, he said, let us make man according to our image and likeness, meaning God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit, man was like them. Genesis 2, 7, again we see God saying, and the Bible says, and God breathed the life-giving spirit upon man, and man became a living being. Meaning God himself again breathed himself to God, to man, and man became a living spirit. Looking like God, living like God, no sickness, no poverty, no fear, everything provided for. And then came Satan. Satan came he looked he look unto man from a distance. He said, well, I can't believe that I've been kicked out from heaven. Man has now been given authority over this world. Man is living the life that I, I envy, that's Satan. He said, the only way that I can take that away from man, if I try to fight man, he will defeat me. Why? He's, he's like God. He's got all the attributes of God. Even if I can send all my millions of demons, the men in the, get, in the garden won't be defeatable. So I have to come with a plan, says Satan. He, he, he deceived the plan. He came up, he conceived the plan to deceive men. Men was deceived. Men handed over the lordship of, of the world to Satan. As he handed over the lordship of the world to Satan, Satan became the god of this world. And now, because of sin and death, sickness and poverty followed. Man's body became susceptible to what? To diseases. Something that man was had dominion over, man, because of sin, his body was opened up to sickness ultimately it was opened up to death. And now Jesus Christ came. When Jesus Christ came, he came as the last Adam. Not as the second Adam. 
But one thing that you have to know is that the first Adam was created according to the image of God. He had the likeness of God. He had every, he had all the attributes of God. When Jesus Christ came, he came to restore all the attributes of God that the first Adam lost. It's something that we, it's something that the church is forgetting. That Jesus Christ did not come so that we don't go to hell. He came to restore all the attributes of God that the first Adam lost. That's why Jesus, when Jesus came, we, 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 we look at, at what happened. Uh, Hebrews 9.12 says, But Christ, having come as a high priest of the good things that already came, that's to say not of this creation, not yet with the blood of goats or calves, but with his own blood entered us for all into the Holy of Holies, having obtained eternal redemption. Meaning, when Christ came, he redeemed us eternally. Meaning, we have been saved eternally. Everything that the first Adam had belonged to us and more. So we need to look what happened to the first Adam. The first Adam was never sick. The first Adam was never poor. In fact, when you think about something, things happen. He had all abundance of provision. He never knew what fear is. The first time that Adam, the first Adam spoke about fear is when he sinned. His, God was calling, up, 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 uh, uh, was calling him. He said, Adam, where are you? And he said, I was afraid. I'm naked. And God said, who told you that you are naked? Did you touch the tree from the garden? So, Adam, the first Adam did not have all these things. Adam was, the first Adam was perfect spiritually. He was perfect with his soul. He did not know what, what fear is. And his body was perfected. His body was covered with glory. That's the reason why even though there was no clothes, he could not see his nakedness. After he fell, he covered himself with fig trees. So now we see Jesus came as the high priest of our eternal redemption. He came and he said, devil, I'm coming to take back everything that you took away from men. Everything that you deceived men from, I'm going to take it back. And Satan said, no, you have to go through my test. Matthew 4, we see Satan uh, testing uh, Jesus Christ. If you are the son of God, turn this if, if. And Jesus Christ's response was simple. It was the word. It is written. It is written. It is written. It is written. Until the Bible says, the last verse said, Satan left him until the opportune time. Why? He could not steal a single thing from Satan, from Jesus. Meaning, Jesus was whole, spirit, soul, and body. Hallelujah. And then after that, Jesus started his victory walk. His first walk on earth, as written in John 1, 14, he said, and the word was made flesh. He dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So this was God's invasion of the sense realm. God came to a place where the natural man lived. The natural man was now a fallen man after years. He was now a victim of sicknesses and disease. What was, the, what was Jesus' first mission? The Bible says he came, he went about all in Galilee, Matthew 4, 18 to 25. Jesus went about all in Galilee, teaching in their synagogue, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, healing all manner of sickness and disease, all manner of sickness among the people. And the report went forth into all Syria. They brought him all those who were sick, holding with diverse diseases, torments and possessed with demons, epileptic and, and palsies, and Jesus healed them all. What did he do? Jesus' first mission, 
He started dealing with two things. The body and the soul. His first walk on earth, he attacked everything that was unleashed against the body and soul of a man. The body and soul of men was the body was tormented with sicknesses and disease and also demons. So demons were tormenting the, the what the soul of a man. And also Jesus came again. Well, I, 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 I love Jesus' victory walk on earth. You know, when he was walking on earth, they said to him, Lazarus has been dead for four days. By now he stinketh. He said, No, 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 no. I'm, I'm on the crusade of redeeming the body of a man. Even death will have no power as long as I'm here. So can you see, this is the part of salvation that is forgotten by Christians. That Jesus first walk, he dealt with sicknesses. He dealt with diseases. He dealt with demons. I want to put it to you today that behind every sickness there is a spirit. Behind every sickness there is a demon. Jesus first victory walk. He said to Satan, I know what you have unleashed in this world. I know that through your sin and death you have unleashed sickness, diseases and demonic torments over my people. I'm going to show you how the new man will live like. I'm going to show you how the new creation will live like. After, after I died on the cross, he began to cast out demons. He began to heal the sick. He rose the dead. He's saying, hey, I'm the last Adam. Look at me, you new, new man. This is how you will be walking on earth. You will be casting out sicknesses. You will be healing the sick. You, you will be delivering those who are possessed by demons. And that was Jesus' victory walk. He conquered so many times. When Satan faced him with all diverse kinds of sicknesses, he conquered so many times. I remember in Luke 13 verse 11, there is a story of a woman who has infirmity. This woman was bent down. She could not stand up straight. And Jesus came and said, be loose from that infirmity. And, woman, and the woman was immediately healed and she was made straight. And Jesus said, is this not the daughter of Abraham who is supposed to be healed? I'm just paraphrasing. In other words, he's saying the covenant that God has with Abraham still stands because I have come as a fulfillment of that covenant. What Jesus Christ, what Abraham and God did when God walked in the blood and turned into a covenant with Abraham, he was working with me because I am God. In that blood I was there because blood was created by me. As God was working as fire, I was there because I and my father are one. As God was speaking, I was there because I am the word. So this man, this woman who has been made to bend for 18 years, God ought to be healed by the reason of the covenant with Abraham. Hallelujah. So Jesus Christ began to deal with everything that was unleashed against our bodies. He said to new creation, your body has been redeemed also. Hallelujah. You, you cannot focus. You cannot say, it's okay, I'm sick. You know, in the sweet by and by, when I go to heaven, that's where I will enjoy my life here on earth. I came here to suffer. No. A thousand times no. That is a lie from, from the bottomless pit of hell. The first walk of Jesus Christ on earth, he was dealing with sicknesses and diseases. And guess what he was called when he came? He was called the last Adam. Who is the, la who is the last Adam? He is the one that God created man according to I created him according to his image and likeness. And who are we? We are created according to the likeness and the image of God. We need to enjoy this threefold salvation. Hallelujah. The Bible says he drives out demons from men. 
Every soul that has demonic spirits, Jesus Christ drove them out. There are many people now in their souls. They are tormented by anxiety. They are tormented by fear. They are tormented by rejection. They are tormented by all types of spirits. Jesus Christ first walked on earth. What did he do? He drove them out. You are saying you have authority over all those things. Drive them out. Luke 10, 19, he says, I've given you power and authority over all powers of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt, hurt you. In my name, you will drive out sickness. You, you will heal the sick. In my name, you will drive out demons. That's who you are, child of God. You are not a victim. Seated there waiting to be positive and die. A thousand times no. You are someone that the world is waiting for. To open your mouth and have a victory walk like Jesus Christ did to begin to proclaim the permanent, the permanent virtues of salvation, which are healing and long life. Hallelujah. And also, I love this. Jesus Christ said, man, I know that you are a spirit being. I know that you were dead because of sin. And Jesus said to them in John 8, 36, he said, whom the son set free is free indeed. He said, I've come to set you free from the, from the pangs of sin and death. So man, man's deliverance is threefold. He delivers man spiritually from the hand of the enemy. He delivers men physically from the disease and hunger. And he also wants to deliver men mentally from, from being ruled by the senses that and bring the spirit of the man free. To be free from demonic oppression. Can I tell you something? One of the things that Satan was able to do to a saved man was to, keep, was to keep a saved man in the old state of mind. That the reason why in Romans 12, 2, Paul says, renew your mind by the reading of your word. In other words, he's saying, you can be saved, but if your mind is not renewed, you will continue to suffer like the world. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ came, he said, I am your substitute. What you're supposed to suffer, I have suffered. I am your substitute. Everything that your body is supposed to go through, I have carried all your infirmities. I am your substitute. So again, our salvation, Jesus Christ came as a substitute. In his earthly walk, you are saying, as you watch me walk in victory, as you watch me walk healing, I'm saying to you, I am your substitute. This is how you should walk. I remember uh, when Murendini was young, I was teaching him how to walk like a man because I realized that he has adopted the walks from school. I said, boy, look at me. This is how you walk. He, we practiced it. He pressed, and then that boyish walk fell away. He began to walk like a man with order and dignity. So this is what Jesus Christ is saying to us. Yes, you have received me as your personal Lord and Savior. Yes, you are born again. You are a new creation. But there is a walk. And that walk is the walk of substitution. Is the walk of power. Is the walk of authority. Don't walk like a victim. Because he who walks like a victim is because he's thinking like a victim. Renew your mind and walk like a victim. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 3 to 4. Must I say in closing? No, I will, I will say in closing that. 1 Corinthians 15. Oh. Okay. The time is on our side. So, for I deliver you first of all that which has also received. 
For I delivered to you first of all that which I also received, that Christ Jesus died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and he was buried and he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. I, I want us to focus on the word sin. Everything wrong that happens, the key and the door for that is sin and death. Jesus Christ came, he, he was buried, and rose again the third day. It's important. Your salvation, there is no salvation outside resurrection. No, no, no. Let me repeat that to you again. You are a new creation because the firstborn among the dead rose up with you. When he died, he died your death. You know, before Jesus Christ died, animals used to die on our behalf. But animals' death was not enough because it did not, the animal death did not have eternity. Only the blood of Jesus Christ, only Jesus Christ's death has eternity because man's sins, man was condemned to, to eternal damnation because of sin. So now when Jesus Christ came, he's the one who died for, he died for us an eternal death. So as he rose again, he rose with us. We are now born again. We are now ro we, we have risen together with Christ. I, I, I want to put it to you that when we are suffering from sicknesses and diseases, those are the diseases of those who never rose with Christ. You have put on a new body, a resurrected body with Christ. You need to begin to declare that, that I have put on a new body, a resurrected body with Christ. How so? Even though Jesus Christ was bled to death, even though they pierced him, when he rose again on the third day, he rose again with a glorified body. He, 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 his body did not need blood. His body was as healthy as more than before he died. So you, you must declare and decree that I am the resurrection of Christ in me. Why? Because Jesus died for me and he was resurrected with me. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, he became sin for me. So you see, the object of Jesus Christ, finished works of Calvary, was that he must make it possible for a natural man to become a new creation. The new creation becomes the righteousness of God in Christ. I want to put it to you. The new creation became the righteousness of God in Christ. What, 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 what is the righteousness? Righteousness means that you have a right standing with God. When Satan attacks, because even after tempting Jesus Christ, the Bible says he left him until opportune time. He is relentless. He doesn't give up. When he comes to you, he finds you in right standing with God. When you speak, it's like God speaking. When you rebuke him, it's like Jesus Christ rebuking him. You are the redeemed of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow. I want you to begin to celebrate your, your body today. And say, body... You are carrying the divine health of Jesus Christ. As I partake in Holy Communion, as I eat his body and drink his blood, I'm receiving the new life. Every daily you are receiving the new life. You are perfected. As you eat the bread, you are receiving the divine health of the body of Christ. So your salvation is threefold. Hallelujah. So mind your mind. Mind what you think about. What is it that you are meditating upon? Don't be like a sitting victim. You know, when somebody is condemned to death in jail, all that they do, they sit in their cell waiting for their execution day. I want you to put it to you today. 
You are not sitting in a spiritual cage waiting to be sick. No, you are seated with Christ in heavenly places, far above all powers and principalities, might and dominion. You are the healed of the Lord. Hallelujah. You are saved spirit, soul, and body. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, I would like us to stop here today. We'll continue with, with the threefold redemption. Because after this salvation, you have to know that God did not save you so that he can just enjoy you looking at you there. He saved you so that he can have fellowship with you. And as, and as he's fellowshipping with you, you are also receiving divine instruction. What is your next move for your purpose here on earth? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We did not touch on, the, on you as the new creation fully. Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God has ordained before, before that we should walk on them. It means that even if it's dark, you are in the light. Hallelujah. For you are his workmanship. Christ's resurrection is your resurrection. You are no longer under the mercy of sin and death. Embrace your threefold salvation. As much as you are mindful of your spiritual salvation, be mindful also that your body should partake in salvation. Your soul should partake in salvation. Mind what you watch and watch what you mind. In other words, don't allow your mind to, to constantly meditate upon death. Don't allow your mind to constantly meditate upon defeat and poverty. You are, sp you are saved spirit, soul, and body. Take care of yourself. Descend the body of Christ. Meditate upon the word of God. And know that you are the new creation. Jesus Christ died for you. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you. Father, that we are enjoying and we shall enjoy our threefold salvation. Father God, you said in your way that three cords are not easily broken. They are better than one. Father, as you open up our eyes, our mind, and revealing the other sides of salvation, we thank you, mighty God, that, Father, the new man in Christ that you spoke about is rising today. The man who is completely saved, spirit, soul, and body, a fearless man who is bold enough to stand up against the schemes and tactics of Satan and declare the word of the Lord in the land of the living. I thank you, Father, for you said it, mighty God, out of our bellies shall flow rivers of living water. We thank you, mighty God, that as we embrace the threefold salvation, we are living a healthy, divine life with divine health, Blessed beyond measure because we know who our God is. For you said in the way that the people who know their God shall be great and, perform, and do great exploits. That's who we are, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. We thank you. God bless you. Meditate upon this sermon. Command your body, tell your body that salvation belongs to you also. You are saved from sicknesses. You, you tell your body that you have divine health. Don't be deceived by any virus or gem. In Jesus' name, amen.